<clears throat> Excuse me. Recording started. Okay. Welcome back to our class. We are studying on the insecurities as a ministry leader. What may be the insecurities that we may not allow our congregation members to grow? Sometimes, as a minister of God, we carry a lot of personal insecurities. And we try to operate in that insecurity among the people we serve. One of the insecurity can be, you know, the attention. The attention that we get in the ministry. What if people, um, you know, uh, if somebody else is much better among uh, uh, in the congregation, what if the attention moves to them? Or what if uh, they consider him as a great leader and then, uh, than me? Something like what happened between Saul and David. We should be, we should know one thing, our identity in Christ. God has called you, God has raised you as a leader. Okay, so we need to be secured in that and we should not be, uh, we should not have such insecurity within us. Some of them may have the insecure that someone else may preach better than me and uh, people will start hearing from them and not from me. Or uh, there would be, again, another insecurity that people may leave our church. If I allow people to attend different churches and, you know, when they go to the church, they like the setup, they like the infrastructure, they like how the pastor shares, teaches and preaches, or they like the people in that congregation. So they may leave our church and go. So to avoid that, I'll make sure that I will not allow any of our church congregation people not to visit any church. So threaten them from the pulpit saying that, you are directly accountable to us and God will honor only those people. God will bless only those who honor uh, and follow what the church pastor is saying, you know, the church leader is saying. We should not be uh, insecure. And because we are insecure, we uh, uh, share such instruction from the pulpit to the people, not uh, taking away their freedom of fellowship. And there'll be uh, another instance where um, they, some of them may be insecure of uh, uh, of the, the in their identity because they're insecure of their identity. So they expect everyone to uh, uh, look up to them as a man of God. So they'll keep instructing them. I am a man of God. I hear directly from God and God does this thing. God hears from me. So they bring this, you know, often telling them, you know, they are the man of God. And there's an, a certain instance will be there where <clears throat> we would have seen insecure that someone in the ministry may do better than them. So they try to suppress if somebody is showing interest or becoming very active in the ministry, they try to suppress them. Keep them still or not hinder their work in the church. Or, um, or if they are, uh, if they seen any insecure in the identity, uh, they talk to uh, they uh, they talk about themselves being influenced by some rich people or some politician people or political people or how powerful uh, they are because they know uh, other powerful people. They try to you know link themselves with somebody else. So I think we need to avoid all that and we need to give our identity from Christ and we need to allow people to grow, people to explore. If you find any or youngsters or other, uh, other members in the church who have been very active, who are growing in the word, growing in the Lord, as a leader, we need to allow them, give them the opportunity opportunity to grow and minister to people okay open up new doors in the church in the ministry so that they can serve in that area if you see any of your congregation member very good in singing okay give them some training and put them in the worship team if you see yourself somebody very well teaching and preaching the word, give them the opportunity, arrange for a cell group or LG, or uh, there can be some kind of training that you can set up where you give this person the opportunity to teach and preach in that area. So yes, we will start up with small, but then we will never suppress them. If you see themselves uh, interested to learn much more, you can refer them to good Bible colleges so that they can be equipped in the word as a ministry leader as a pastor, we should not have this insecurity. Oh, if I send them to a Bible college, 
they may get equipped and they may become better than themselves actually that is one way good we should see as a pastor as a ministry leader we should see that our church members our congregation our children grow much better than what we are we should not be insecure in this area the word of god says we need to equip them to be better than us we need to show them the way show them the path okay so we should not hold them do not provide a platform for people with a personal agenda so there are many many times people come to a church with a personal agenda for example if there's a businessman he may have this in mind if i see this congregation is big they have about you know 1000 people in their church or more than that so if i'm part of this church i can build my business so what happens He, with this mentality he comes to church so the minute he comes to church he meets with the pastor one on one he shares about his uh, his background his business plan how strong how powerful he is and how he can grow his business so if you can talk about me and my business in the church and when my business grows i can um, bless the church much more you know each people come with big personal agendas to the church but one thing as a ministry leader many offers may be very attractive but then this is not business this is ministry this place is for us to serve god and god's people not to promote anyone's personal agenda just like this person there may be somebody else coming up with another agenda so our our uh, uh, <clears throat> church platform should not become an ad agency or advertisement center to advertise each and every one's business to promote each one's business in the church no we teach and preach the word of god and that's it we minister to people we serve people but not promoting not providing the church platform to anyone to promote their personal agenda it can be anything i just gave you an example of a business it can be anything various scenarios you will come but we need to be be very careful we need to discern with what agenda the person is coming some of them like this what i shared may be very direct but some of them they may not be but they will try to put it across as though they are doing favor to us we need to discern we need to be very careful we need to understand with what uh, uh, mindset the person has come so as a leader we need to set things uh, you know in place we should not promote any such thing we do not do ministry for the uh, for the people to support us financially but then we serve people because god has called us to serve this should be rooted and grounded in our mind when we have this mentality nothing will move us especially money that should not be in our mind and also second giving priority to some influential people no we should treat everyone equal everyone same we should have this understanding that we all are on the same level ground just being a leader is a responsibility that god has given us and also we should not be um, mindful of the position the position the title that should not matter today you may be a director of a company but tomorrow with uh, related to a recession we may lose our job so what happened from a ceo of a company today we have become zero so if you hold on to that title will the title save us will the title bring honor to us no matter who we are no matter what position we hold in in the ministry or elsewhere one thing we need to be assured of is our identity in christ we are the child of god we are the servant of god this should be our identity when we serve people this is a permanent identity you may be a pastor you may be a ministry leader you may be a servant of god no matter who you are your title should not affect from what you are trying to serve or serve people serve god you are serving because you are the child of god god has called you for this reason for the season for you to minister for you to be there you to uh, to help people so we should have this in our heart 
as we study the old testament books we see how the god raised each and every king each and every judge for a certain period for a certain purpose they had god had placed in them the authority the people to whom they can minister whom they can serve so under their leadership we are accountable to god with the people whom god has put in our hand so we need to be mindful of serving them ministering to them not having any kind of personal agenda or not holding to any kind of title and saying to that people serve us or people respect us or people you know uh, whatever but we need to serve them without any personal agenda do not fight for what you do not understand a god cannot a uh, god cannot be put in a box so the bible uh, reveals god but it does not set boundaries for god god will never violate his word but he is not confined to his word like god is bigger than the book that he has given to us god can work in different ways so when certain things in our little mind that we may not understand then we need to allow we need to say lord i may not understand now but i know you are working you're moving in this and then allow god to you know uh, give us time give us a ways that we can understand and move so the best thing to do is not to uh, um, you know to fight for what we do not understand uh, we need to allow it to god saying god it is your work and you will know what is best and you will handle it in the right way some things people say and do are not worth our time we are here to serve people so we should not be controlled uh, we are not responsible for people's behavior we cannot control their choice and decision what they take in their life sometimes in ministry we see people easily forget how we served them people suddenly change their mind uh, about us and you know uh, uh, initially they would have really encouraged and supported us but then suddenly they start criticizing us uh, and point out all the flaws and shortcomings that we have yes there's no man perfect we all have our own flaws as a leader when we stand we are not standing here as perfect being we have our own challenges in our life we have our own weakness we have certain things that we need we ourselves need to be equipped and taught and learn and outgrow certain things we have our own flaws and our own shortcomings but then people who initially encouraged you supported you but now you see them criticize you and point fingers at you and they speak ill about you to everyone so we need to be strong in the ministry we need to be very strong we should not get our get ourselves distracted with all the comments that you get yes you can see what what they uh, what they have shared is going to help you to change your life to set things proper please go ahead and implement that okay acknowledge it thank you for correcting me i will make sure that i will change but if there are certain things if they're criticizing you it is not in your hands to do anything it is to do with people their thoughts their opinion in that time you need to just bring it to god and uh, you know say lord you handle the situation you minister to them you talk to them and you we need to stay strong focus on god and continue in the area we are serving so in in this situation in this season you may see people leave people retaliate people criticize people forget the good things that you have done for them when they were at difficult time so that's okay so we don't have to point out all the history to them to remember the good things what you have done to them but allow that to the lord leave that to the lord let lord god be your defender may god speak for you we have to just remain quiet there are situations where we have faced a lot of hardship yes with a little experience we have we have not faced much but little that we have come across there are times when you know not try to defend myself just keep quiet by saying i'm very sorry i should have handled it well very sorry my mistake 
just keep it allow the lord to defend you and in season in time we have seen how lord turned that situation in your favor it has made people to come and acknowledge their mistake and are sorry we have seen things change people transform people come back and say apologize for the mistake what they have done but in this way we are showcasing christ likeness christ image in ourselves it is uh, it is in, uh, sometimes we don't have to defend ourselves we don't have to um, you know uh, when somebody is trying to criticize you somebody is pointing finger at you it is okay leave uh, be focused on god um, yes it is very difficult but we need to stay strong we need to be focused because god has called you for the ministry it is not them yes certain areas we need to work on do bring a change work hard uh, stay strong allow the lord to work in you and allow the lord to work in the other person as well and leave the offenses behind not worry uh, not worth carrying them with you yes when people may offend you but do not get disappointed because people also offended jesus even apostle paul in his ministry was very disappointed discouraged by many believers in galatia that he, he labored i mean he served them faithfully but easily they swayed by some other people's teaching and they uh, you know they deviated they came against apostle paul but then he prayed for them he was not offended with them he prayed for them he prayed for the attitude he asked god to handle them he asked god to bring a change in them so that god could give them the understanding so in the ministry we may come many people in our in our way in our life who may offend but leave the offenses carry on the ministry because god has called you and we'll see um, the next point here is people grow people change so be ready to let go so in the ministry you may minister to people you may take some people minister to them nurture them you'll see them grow in the ministry and there would be a point where they want to have a change in their journey they may want to have their own ministry so as a pastor as a ministry leader we need to be ready to let go of them in a nice way in a way uh, we enjoy sending our own children to abroad for our higher studies we don't get offended because our children are going we are happy with more maturity we bless them and we send them in the same way in the ministry we have uh, as people walk into our life as they have been learned we should not say we should not have this in our mind hey i thought you everything so that you may serve along with me in the ministry not to leave my ministry and go away no people will bring i mean god will bring the right kind of people who can who can continue your ministry who can help you in your ministry for your ministry to grow but as um, you grow as you minister to people as you raise leaders in uh, in the church you should also be ready and understand that people grow people change so we need to be ready to let them go into the area what god has called them to be we should not hold on to people just because we need our work to be done we need to allow them to go and explore things in their life okay uh, at apc we have the privilege to see uh, each and every leaders grow mature develop uh, they walk with god and in the ministry and we see pastor you know i have released many leaders you know released from the ministry because uh, and released into the call of god many have come to bangalore they have studied in the bible college they have joined as a staff and then they would have said like i want to minister i want to plant a church and pastor wholeheartedly have sent them to do what they what god has called them to do and we also see new leaders you know we create opportunity in our church so that the new leaders are encouraged to grow to take up to take up that place and serve in the ministry so god always provides the right kind of people and we need to have the generous heart to bless them and release them without any kind of heart feeling and flattery do not accept it do not give it flattery is very different from the encouragement 
flattery is something having a personal agenda behind what we wanted and we just flatter to make people you know um, for the pleasure we don't do that we don't accept it also even when somebody says every time they'll come and say like wow today uh, <clears throat> your sermon was so good you ministered to me um, okay it touched me changed my life and every week they come up with the same thing oh this is what god spoke to me and you exactly said the same way um, every week after week you know somebody is genuinely not saying that you know they're trying to flatter you to be recognized or uh, to be uh, to be uh, they they have a kind of a personal agenda what they wanted from you okay so we need to uh, draw a fine line from flattery do not accept it okay praise god and leave it there and do not uh, give it and we also as a leader we don't have to flatter anyone anyone no matter how rich how influential how powerful they may be in the church we don't have to flatter anyone but we need to respect everyone keeping in mind okay yes encouraging is different encourage one and on build one and one exhort but this is flattery flattery is not good it is not from god okay so this reminds us uh, psalms 115 verse 3 says not unto us o lord and not unto us but to your name give glory because of your mercy and because of your truth so whatever we are in the ministry is because of god If somebody gives you a very good comment praise god remind yourself that you that you know god has blessed you god has given you this wisdom the skill everything comes from god so there's nothing uh, for us to take that praise or glory but then we need to direct it to god give god the glory with all your heart okay and do not take anything to yourself at the same time with others also when you see people doing good work we don't have to flatter them but give praise to god for that person and encourage that person genuinely in the right way and you can listen to people's idea but you make the final decision so as a leader yes uh, there safety in people's counsel we read that in book of proverbs so yes we do counsel with each other in in our church uh, yes we have a staff we have a co team then we have um, as a, a co team with whom we discuss the ideas uh, we discuss the situation we take the ideas and then finally we decide and we implement it so when we decide and when we implement things go well praise god give the credit to the team but things don't go well you take the ownership because you made the decision okay they say when you make it you uh, you know uh, if then thing things didn't go, work out well you learn the lesson from that area you take the ownership of the uh, mistake and you move on so it is better that you decide and not take the ideas from everyone i mean take the ideas but do not make the decision based on others idea you have to decide as a leader you have to decide and make a decision do not permit any indi individual to control you so as a leader as i said there would be many influential people business people coming to your church okay one of the agenda they may have is to control the pastor at church especially when we are young leaders we have different people come to our church they may be rich they may be very influential they may be very pioneer in the ministry they'll come to your church and they'll come with the agenda oh this pastor is very young in age you know we can we can uh, we can try to hand uh, 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 i mean we can make them serve according to how we want it they may have come to the church very new just one month or one week or you know they would start giving their suggestion to us they will start suggesting i think you have to uh, you need to change your worship style you need to change the prayer style you need to change your sermon uh, topics themes uh, i can suggest you can we meet up at home can you come to my office we can meet up we can discuss more how better you can uh, take up the church i can do this so and so at church so you know we should not be carried away with any such thing do not allow anyone to control any individual to control you 
with the intellectual they may be very intellectual they may uh, be very knowledgeable but whatever it is this is god's work god has set you as a leader you see god you have your own team in the church that is said so you discuss and you move as a team and god has appointed you as a leader we are responsible to lead the church and not give that to any individual who come and try to control us handle super spiritual ones with caution it's very important there may be many in the church saying god is speaking to me as a you know um, god spoke to me uh, saying that uh, you need to change uh, um Uh, you need to start speaking about the end times or you need to start uh, speaking about healing you know according to the situation what they are going in their life and what they uh, <coughs> what they need so they will try to come and impose that on the pastor on the leader saying god spoke to me to tell you to do this so as a ministry leader you need to handle very very cautious when god has appointed you as a leader god will definitely speak to you he will definitely put an impression in your heart what you are doing how you need to lead the church so you will listen to them but at the same time you will handle it carefully you'll say okay we will see to it how we can implement that i will discuss with the team we'll get back to you so that without offending the other person you will handle it right sorry but at the same time if a person is genuinely uh, spiritually walking with the lord and you know god has impressed something in their heart for which you also been praying asking god to guide you and talk to you and god puts a word and you can sense it it is from god listen take it with all humility and all submission and implement it and you see that suggestion um that which they said would bear fruit in your walk in your ministry and also raise up leaders a very important very important we see in the uh, in, in the new testament how paul raised young leaders wherever even he raised leaders like priscilla aquila he also raised timothy a young man who may came across he nurtured him in the word and in the spirit he instructed them he instructed him like a son you know he took care of him and he was so much confident that he will take the ministry after him and also the other places he raised many other leaders where the word of god can you know reach and also he himself uh, imitated christ so that you know he set a example he set a spiritual example as a leader where all the other leaders can follow him the way he prayed the way he conducted himself in the ministry of god without any expectation he labored unto god more than 100% he was mindful of of people he was mindful of god as a leader we need to be mindful of god we need to be mindful of people we need to be available for them and serve them okay and at the same time raise leaders so that our work will not be stopped but our work will continue the good work that we have started will continue when we raise good leaders so it is very important to raise leaders and stand by your leaders as uh, as we raise uh, people expectancy will be as equal to the leader but then yes as leaders we all make mistake we all have a um, you know a time of growth in stages as i said we do make mistake we do learn but as a leader as a pastor you stand with your young leaders as you nurture as you grow with them okay there will be many in the congregation coming against your leaders coming and complaining to you okay so uh, <clears throat> reason it out discuss with the leader but at the same time you will allow you will given the time to correct change minister but stand by your leader 
do not put your leader down at the same time if there's any mistake you will encourage him to apologize to correct this mistake to live by a standard a godly standard okay but then you will be with that person do not let uh, inaction or negligence birth absalons like what king david did he never corrected his own sons it can be absalom or it can be amnon or it can be tamar when the things didn't go well in david's family david uh, yes he was a very good king but he failed to be a good father he never corrected uh, uh, amnon when he uh, when he uh, uh, when he uh, when he um, when he violated uh, uh, tamar's virginity he also didn't address absalom's uh, anger when he killed amnon he didn't even uh, uh, talk to absalom of for the wrong that he did he killed his own brother so he failed in bringing a correction to his own children and we see absalom becoming rebellion against his own father so it is very important to bring correction in the right time among the people uh, as we also discussed how to bring the correction uh, before lovingly gently bring correction to our people but it has to be done immediately there should not be any delays and do not be partaker of other people's sin we need to be very careful as a ministry leader there would be many scenarios where people will come to you they will come and say um, pastor uh, give me a letter for uh, um, uh, give me a letter that uh, uh, stating that i was serving along with you because i want to apply for a bible college abroad okay so they are asking uh, for a previous experience letter that you served in the church well this person may be attending the church is not even serving as a volunteer but then coming and asking you claiming for a letter to be given like that in the church so we can clearly say no yes he may be in our church he may be faithful but he never served under you or <clears throat> during the marriage proposals people may come and ask you how is this person i was uh, you know each one's character yes the parents before giving uh, the bride and groom exchanging they will inquire with the church pastor about the person's character so there's nothing for us to manipulate nothing for us to uh, give only the good part of the person tell what the person is let your yes be and yes no be and no say clearly or we not uh, sign for anything we do not partake in anyone's uh, personal agendas for any other benefit be very careful stay away from all that <clears throat> saying no is not a sin saying no is not a sin we may uh, we may think uh, as a christian leader if i say no this person may leave our church it's okay he's just asking me a letter to give it to him anyways he's going to study in a bible college what's wrong in just giving a letter no it is wrong because he has never served under you or with you he's only been attending the church so you can give a letter saying that yeah, you can clearly tell him yes sure i can give you a letter but i can only give you a letter saying that you have been attending a church i cannot give you a letter you served as a volunteer or you served in the church as a staff no i cannot do that so let your no be no no is not a sin do not st uh, <clears throat> stoop down to the level of your accusers there will be many who will come against you who will accuse you so we as a leader as a servant of god don't have to stoop down to their level to speak ill about them or what you good you did for them and what went wrong or what they are doing is wrong we don't have to explain it we don't have to stoop down to their level it is <clears throat> as we said let the lord be your defender let lord be your defender allow god to work in their life so this is very important because we always have a choice not to repay evil for evil but we always have a choice to uh, live at a level above those offending we can allow god to work in their life and in us when we allow god to work god will definitely defend our case and god will definitely bring a change in that person and also bring a change in our own life 
it is godliness not to defend ourselves not to stoop down into the other person's level just to have a big heart big mind and allow things to let go stay focused on god it's not very easy but we need to um, <clears throat> be encouraged ourselves to focus on god we need to encourage ourselves to let things go we need to tell ourselves like let god be my defender and i don't have to defend myself or i don't have to stoop down to their level to accuse back or whatever we should be mindful of god and his people we are here to serve them we are not here to accuse them we should allow the lot to work okay with this we we are completing the third chapter on people and handling people and at uh, at our at apc we believe that every minister every believer is a minister of god at apc we believe every believer is a minister of god we teach the word we equip them we raise them as a leader we create opportunities for our church members to step out go and serve out <clears throat> in different ways we um, you know we we plan out missions we plan out uh, short term bible colleges in rural areas in north india and we open up that opportunity to our church members we tell them we have been teaching you we have been equipping ping you in the world and who can keep themselves who can make themselves available to travel to so and so place and minister to them be a blessing to them and we see many of our church members come forward from the busy schedule they take one week time each of them take turn to take time and they step out to serve god Uh, it's amazing to see how people get involved as they step out to serve God. They see how God minister to them through them to others. They are filled with awe of God when they come back with great testimonies, and we praise God for all that. So even in a Bible college, when we, um, you know, when we equip our students, we don't equip our students just in the word. They come here, they'll stay with us a year, two year, or three years, and they'll go. No, we equip them for life. We equip them for life. We build them with the word, with the spirit, and also along with the character. We speak a blessing over them. you know we try to build them because character is very important because that is what will hold the anointing so we build a strong character in our students life every student who have been graduated from our college are ready to serve people despite the condition what they are they are recognized or not recognized they have this heart to serve god serve people with the limited resource what they have in their hand so this is what has been expected and we encourage them that every one our leaders when the students join in our college from the very first year we look at them as a leader keeping the final picture in mind we work with them we lead them we you know we speak into their life and build their character yes our students we see our students you know learn and also at the same time they unlearn certain things and they build themselves in the word and spirit and step out as a true servant of god that's amazing to see as you all grow you yourself yes you're on online but then even on online we trust god to minister and shape our students build them for the ministry and be released to serve god with mindful to serve only god and his people okay yes there's lot of advantages when we have the opportunity to study in bangalore uh, praise god if you all have the opportunity that is that is uh, uh, you know i i tell that is a privilege you have to grasp it and come over to stay with us in bangalore we have a residential school uh, it's nice it's a very different experience because the whole agenda changes from morning till night we have certain things to do and this training will shape us for life will set us in ministry for life we'll have nothing else than to please god with all our heart and mind and soul there's a joy when we serve god despite the circumstances difficult the difficulties we may go through but then 
but then every day in our college will be a learning every day there's something to learn god will orchestrate things uh, you know we get to learn from people from our leaders uh, from the pressure from the situation it may be a difficult situation at the same time it may be some pleasant situation we see the presence of god when we worship together we meet many new people every week after week in the different locations where we are assigned to serve and as we serve we serve under other leaders so we get to learn from their life the heart that they carry for the ministry the work they do so the learning is immense learning is immense so yes with this um, just pray just ask god god is this what you want me to do is this what i can do <clears throat> ask god to give you that opportunity uh, to create that opportunity to learn and equip in the word and as we prepare ourselves let's be mindful that god is teaching us and god is building us okay as god is building people he is also building each of us we are his people we are his children we are the fruit of his labor okay we need to harvest more because god said i will use you to be fruitful in my kingdom each one will harvest 30 60 and 100 folds into his kingdom bring glory to him how when we submit ourselves we will see god move in and through us yes with this i'll open up to the class to <clears throat> share your experience we'll go with brother enoch uh good morning once again everyone i want to ask a question are you hearing me? Yes, please. Go ahead. Yeah, you are saying something about the leadership in the church. Uh, uh, with my own experience, I want to share my experience and also ask you a question. Sure, brother. Uh, when uh, when uh, my senior pastor then, before we start our ministry, called me. Although before he called me, God told me on Saturday that we are relocating to a new branch. Someone is there, so we are moving us to the branch. And uh, after I'm moving them to the branch, another resident pastor, then after a resident pastor, then another resident pastor called me and said, if I don't submit to him, he's going to pull me out from the branch. It's not a senior pastor. He wasn't the one who sent me to the branch. So, and I asked, in terms of what, he was talking about finance money come and appreciate me i was it's like a dark moment to me because this is just money we have to deposit it in a bank account i cannot remove offering and fight to a resident pastor like me who although is my senior as a resident pastor but why do you request for money so i didn't ask so i went straight to report the incident to my senior pastor, my superior. Please, this is what the resident pastor said. I don't want to offend anybody. I want to do my work the way God and use you to send me to the branch. Eventually, it came up and I was removed from the branch back to the headquarters. So in such scenario, because you said we should respect, if my senior as RRT, as a senior resident pastor, I'm a junior resident pastor, but we are both a resident pastor then. then. Now, uh, I took a step, and a step was for me to report the matter to the superior, our superior. Is it right for me to report? Though I've reported, though I'm no longer in the ministry, God has given us our own ministry by the special grace of God. But we are talking about we should respect, we should uh, obey the leader. He is my senior in that cab in that level. But what I could have done in such case, did I still respect him? That's why that he wants to extort money because I know that's the exploitation. That's my question. Will I still go ahead and still be respecting you, knowing that this particular pastor is anxious for money, which I am not. So in, in such case, what should I have done? Did you get my question, now? Huh? The last point, brother. I, I didn't get that. Okay. I say, what should I have done? I mean, what do you think I could have done 
you don't have to give him money or keep on respecting him or to concern him. Because he was angry that I reported him to the senior pastor. What did you do? So did I what, what I did, I reported him to the senior pastor. And he was angry that why did I report him to the senior pastor? I think that was the right so thing. Was that was the right thing, that you did not give any money, but then you reported to the senior pastor. Yes, but he, he planned my removal from the branch, which I'm not angry, and uh, I thank God that everything went well. But I was yes. removed from the branch because yes. I didn't give me the money. <laughs> yes, ministry is not a business. We will definitely come across such situation, but we need to understand that ministry is not a business. We need to, we should not be giving in into any kind of uh, like this money handling or, you know, exchange for any kind of benefit. Yes, though you were removed from the branch, that's okay. Ministry is about God. God raises us. Uh, maybe God wanted you to do something else. Okay. It is God's work, God's ministry. We should not be offended. Leave the offenses to God. And uh, there is a plan of God, isn't it? Yes, it may cause kind of hurt, but then bring it to God and leave it to God. Let the Lord defend you, defend for you. Okay, and uh, God does always have a plan. God's ways are very different. We cannot put uh, God in a box and, you know, uh, we cannot, uh, be, just because we don't understand what happened, we cannot put God in a box and question. So allow the Lord to work. Maybe after some years or after some time, we will understand, okay, this is what it is. Okay. Yes, as the time is running and you all also have uh, the third hour, can we... Uh, Conclude the session with a word of prayer. Can I request anyone to lead us in prayer before we could dismiss our class? Father, we thank you for the lessons that we learned today. We pray that uh, in ministry we would be able to consider people in the value that you have given and help us to do everything in love, in honor, and in subjection to your word, O oh God, give us wisdom and understanding to do your will in the ministry, Lord. We thank you for Pastor Diana to share your word and thank you for opening up our eyes. Or we pray that we would be able to walk with you closely to see the miracles that you have in store for us as a ministry, O oh God. We give you praise in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. See you all next week and uh, yeah thank you god bless thank you thank you god bless